I'm often asked about blending and oil paints and how to prevent the paint from getting too muddy. But I feel like the fastest way to ruin some of the vitality in your brushwork or your subtle colors is actually to blend too much. Oils do take much longer to dry than other types of paint. So I think for new oil painters, this can be one of the biggest causes of frustration when they're starting out. So I always say like my focus or my approach is not to do so much blending on the canvas, but instead pre-mix on your palette blocks of or gradations of color that you use and put on separately in separate individual strokes. It really depends on your technique of whether you wanna go from dark to light or light to dark. Obviously in this demonstration for simplicity, I used black and white. However, if you're using color, you might be transferring from one color to another. But instead of worrying too much on blending two colors together, you would instead add two separate blocks of color as you see them, and then apply a third color with a separate brush stroke. Something that makes this easier is to pre-mix what's called color strings. So you could pre-mix like a number of gradations of gray, um, and then it makes it simpler for you when you're trying to add strokes of different values that you see. But this way you're not relying on techniques on the canvas to blur hard transitions in your work. You're kind of actually mixing each of the subtle areas of transition across an object. Because once you start using techniques on the canvas to really blur two colors into each other, you may get unpredictable results or unclean mixtures. You can also use other techniques, like you might wanna do an underpainting that's almost just very blocky and then add layers on top or even use things like glazing to soften a blend. Also for blending, you can consider what mediums you wanna use because there are certain mediums that dry very fast like liquid um, or even linseed oil or mediums that dry slower like safflower oil. And if you're painting something like a portrait, um, over blending on the canvas can actually make you lose some of the subtlety like portraiture is so much about very subtle shifts of warm and cool tones in the skin or how the way dark and light move into each other and around the form and it can be really easy to overwork these elements on the work and then find that you have this muddy and flat painting where you'd start it out with a lot of subtlety and interest. And obviously you can make the choice between direct painting or indirect painting, whereas direct painting is when you paint wet on wet or you paint in one layer. That can make blending both harder and easier because it's easier when you're um, painting into wet paint, even just a stroke of a new color will automatically sort of blend into its neighbor. At the same time, if you add too much paint onto the canvas or things can kind of go out of your control a little bit faster, you may find that you have too much paint down and when you work into it, you're getting these colors that you you aren't um, trying to achieve, like muddier colors or perhaps there's too much graying. With indirect painting, which is done through like letting layers dry and then going on top, you have the advantage of you can paint on an edge or next to another element without blending into it. You kind of um, paint on top of it. That means you have more control um, but you're not necessarily gonna be interacting with neighboring elements. Like if you're painting hair, you're not gonna be able to allow a stroke to sort of blend in as you pull the paint across the surface. Um, you're not gonna be able to use that to create interesting edges. So now that I've said basically to try not to blend, I'm gonna talk about some blending techniques that you can use. Um, try not to overuse them, but they can be really useful when you do want a more subtle transition. The first you could call the stitch, where you paint two clean patches of color next to each other, then making sure you use a clean brush. You either dab or pull across the line or crisscross the border between these two clean patches of color, and it just removes that hard border and creates a little bit more of a transition. And depending on the mark that you make, you can have a kind of more rough transition or perhaps a smoother one. It really depends on your, your style. Another technique that you could try is called the pull. I kind of referred to it earlier, say you're painting hair and you want that hair to almost recede back into the background elements. You might pull um, an, a stroke of paint into a surrounding area and sort of let it blend as you pull the stroke. 
Especially if you're painting from dark to light, this is a especially effective technique. The technique I was talking about earlier, which is basically the most effective and definitely the most painterly technique is called the gradient, where you just apply separate strokes of color and don't actually concern yourself too much with mixing them, just allowing them to be what they are. And this can actually create a lot of interest, a lot of interesting brush strokes that can make your painting more painterly or um, emotive. And especially if you're using this technique in wet on wet painting, actually it's interaction, each stroke can interact with the stroke before it and create an appearance of a blend. But the most effective technique for really like softening or blowing out an air of your painting would be called the soften. And it's another way of blending that's really useful if you want to remove a hard edge or paint a cloud or create very atmospheric background elements that sort of recede into space. And the approach here is again, create a gradient of separate clean colors on your painting and then take a really soft feathery brush that you wouldn't normally use for oil painting and making sure it's clean, you sort of lightly flutter over the edges of a gradient and you can kind of keep going as long as you like. You just have to understand that the more you use this technique, the more you'll lose some of the vitality in your brush strokes or any subtlety between the colors. It really will kind of very much soften the appearance. And you make sure that your brush strokes are really soft. And like, I like to do more of a stippling brush stroke, but you can sort of lightly feather as well, uh, whichever works for you. But I've really enjoyed using this type of technique on the painting I'm working on at the moment, in which in the background, I use sort of like trying to get a really photographic like blur effect. And this is the best way to achieve that. And I use brushes that are like soft. Often the shape of them is called a mop. They're just more bushy than anything. Like often you get goat hair or badger hair for this type of brushes, but there can also be some really soft synthetic blends. Um, anyone is gonna work well. You kind of want a better quality just because you don't want lots of brush hairs um, falling out, especially since this is usually done in the kind of later stage of your painting. And especially in like classical painting, artists would often use this sort of brush to create like soft edges and the appearance of atmospheric perspective and things receding back into space. So it can be a pretty useful technique to have under your belt. Although it's really up to you, like what your style of painting is, what you're painting, what techniques you use. But like I said, whatever of these techniques you might want to use, there's almost a trade-off where the more that you blend or the more you overwork the surface of your painting, the more you may lose some of the interest or vitality that you've put down in your initial strokes. So it's a choice for every artist.